We'll be going over IRS Form 4255, Recapture of Investment Credit. Taxpayers use this tax form to figure the increase in tax if they're recapturing an investment credit that was previously claimed or for recapturing uh, a qualifying therapeutic discovery project grant. So the, the form instructions contain a lot of detail about recapture requirements and special rules. But generally, if you disposed of investment credit property before the end of a full five-year period um, where you were able to place the property into service, you may have to recapture and repay some of that credit back. Uh, if you change the use of the property, if the business use decreased over the recapture period, uh, if the applicable code sections for which you were taking a credit no longer apply, um, there's a long list of different uh, scenarios in which you may need to recapture the investment credit. The exceptions, there are several exceptions. So a transfer pursuant to the death of a taxpayer, you don't have to recapture the tax credit. A transfer between spouses or an incident to divorce. However, a subsequent disposition by the spouse who uh, that property was transferred to uh, may fall under recapture rules. Um, a transaction to which Internal Revenue Code Section 381A applies, which relates to certain acquisitions of assets of one corporation by another corporation, or a mere change in the form of conducting a trade or business. So if the taxpayer still retains the investment property in that trade or business and retains that that business itself, then it's it's not subject to recapture. Um, the therapeutic discovery project grant is a little interesting. Under the Affordable Care Act, Section 9023, um, <clears throat> there was a, a grant allowable for qualifying therapeutic discovery projects. So this form captures that recapture if applicable. Um, if, if you're a taxpayer that's a partnership or an S corporation or other pass-through entity, uh, you may need to uh, see the form instructions on how to calculate the credit and then pass it down to your partners or shareholders or uh, beneficiaries. So uh, just make sure you understand how to report that in your respective schedules and then how that flows through on your respective income tax return. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think we can get started on this one page tax, tax form. So. So I have to put the name as shown on the tax return and then the identifying number. We're going to just use Acme Enterprises. And we'll just say Acme Energy Project. You should state whether it's a rehabilitation energy qualifying advanced coal project. Um, you know, qualifying advanced energy project, so on and so forth. Uh, you may need to see the instructions uh, for the investment credit uh, IRS Form 3468 uh, for the year that the property was placed into service if you need to coordinate the definitions. If it's a rehab property, like a rehabilitation tax credit, then you would need to show the type of building. If it's an energy, energy property, then you need to indicate the type of energy. So we'll say advanced coal. All right, so we're only going to put one, but obviously for each eligible property, you would put into a corresponding row, which would then uh, be calculated separately uh, in part one and part two and part three uh, in their respective columns. So everything in row A would go into column A. Row B goes into column B, so on and so forth. If you have four, more than four properties, you can either use additional copies of Form 4255 or you can use 
an additional uh, spreadsheet or document that performs the same functions. And in that case, you would uh, do all of those in accordance with how we're going to do steps 1 through 16. But when you get down to 17 and 18, where you add property columns A through D, you would also include all the property columns that you calculated offline or in a separate uh, version of this form. So line 9 contain or line 17 contains all of the line 9 calculations. So if we kept going, we would have you know multiple uh, line 9 figures and then same with 16 and then you would add those in into lines 17 and 18 respectively. So for now, we're just going to walk through as if we only have one project, which is the Acme Energy project. So um, in line one, you'll need to uh, enter the rate that you use to figure the original credit. You, in order to do that, you'll have to uh, go back to the form 3468 that you filed where you calculated the tax credit. So. Um, so for this project, we're just going to say that it was 25%. That's a number. Again, this is just for uh, calculation purposes, has no basis. Um, I'm just pulling this out of thin air. Enter, in line two, you would enter the credit base as of the end of the previous tax year. Tax year. So if you, you know, if you're doing your cost accounting and you're depreciating the property over time, uh, then you would uh, enter the cost basis as it stands at the end of last year. So um, we'll just say that this was $10,000 a basis at the end of last year. Uh, now, if there was a net increase in non-qualified, non-recourse financing, then you would enter the credit base that you use to figure the original credit and then you would reduce that net increase and then vice versa if there was a net decrease in non-qualified non-recourse financing then you would enter the credit base you used for the original credit and you would add back that decrease so in line three we're going to enter the net change in non-recourse financing related to the property so net increases would be uh, entered as a positive number net decreases as a negative number so we'll just say that there's a five thousand dollar increase uh, due to um, not non-qualified nine recourse uh, so the credit base as of the end of the current tax year would be five thousand dollars we get that by separating the five thousand dollars here from the ten thousand dollars here and then in line five, you will need to uh, refigure that tax credit by multiplying line one by line four, and you get $1,250. Uh, in line six, you actually have to go back to your prior year tax returns to see how much credit was taken for this property on form 3800 in prior years. So, um, but do not include the amount of any credit that was previously recaptured because of an increase in non-qualified, non-recourse financing. So leave that part out. And we'll just say that there was $5,000 of credit that was taken there. So now that's the original uh, investment credit. Um, you know, the refigured credit, the credit previously taken. So now we have to recapture um, so there's going to be a part where we recapture based on the increase of non-qualified, non-recourse financing, um, basically this amount. And then we would also, um, in part three, ca uh, calculate the recapture from the actual disposition of the property or whenever we stopped using it as an investment credit qualifying company property. So on line seven under part two, we're going to enter the credit subject to recapture. So in other words, we would subtract line five from line six. And so that means that $3,750 is uh, subject to recapture of what we've taken. Um, in line eight, we 
enter the unused general business credits that would have been allowed. So uh, because we took the investment credit in past years, we uh, did not take unused general business credits. So um, if we're now recapturing the investment credit, we can then go back and calculate, um, you know, the general business credits that we would have been able to use. So um, we'll just say that this was $2,000. And then from there, we'll subtract line eight from line seven, and we've got $1,750. This is the recapture tax directly as a result of the net increase. So if we didn't have any unused general business credits, then this full amount of $3,750 would drop down to line nine. But because we may be able to use general business credits, we can use that to uh, negate some of the recapture. Now in part three, we're going to go through and calculate the amount of recapture that we need to do um, if the property was not used for a complete five years. So if the property was used for five full years or more, you don't have to recapture anything from the disposition of property. Uh, the only recapture would be based on uh, the increase in non-qualified, non-recourse financing. So let's just say that we put the property into use in... January 2018, and we took it out of service in 2022. So basically, uh, let me make this easier. So now we need to figure out the number of full years not partial years, full years. So um, if the property was held for 12 months or less, you would enter zero. Uh, in this case, we're counting the full year for 2018, 2019, 2021, 2020, 2021, but not 2022. So four full years. Okay. So the amount of unused general business credits that would have been allowed, um, there is a worksheet in the form instructions where you can kind of walk through um, it's, um, and uh, just like up here in line eight, uh, there is a worksheet in the form instructions, worksheet one, that allows you to take the general business credits that you would have been allowed by walking through. Now I put in a placeholder of $2,000 here, but there's actually a, form, a worksheet within the form instructions uh, that you would need to walk through that I, I can't show you on this screen. And then same here for line 13, uh, there's a worksheet for the unused uh, general business credits. So we're just gonna say that that's $2,000. Um, we're going to subtract line 13 from line 6. So the line 13, $2,000 from line 6, that gives us $3,000. In the form instructions, there's a recapture percentage table. Um, basically, five years or more, zero, then it's a sliding scale. So four years, 20% is the recapture percentage. Three years would be 40%. Two years would be 60%. One year would be 80%. And if it was zero years, meaning 12 months or less, then you would have to recapture 100% of the credit that you took. So here we're taking back 20%. And then we're simply multiplying this number by the 20% and we get $600. So if you have multiple properties, uh, you're going to uh, add line nine across the board here and enter that sum. In line 17 and then uh, for multiple properties in line 18 you're going to add all of the line 16 numbers and then in line 19 if this was a qualifying therapeutic discovery project grant then you would need to attach a statement 
um, attesting to that grant and then enter the amount that you need to recapture uh, based on uh, Section 9023E of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you don't use this form to calculate that recapture. You actually need to attach a statement showing how you figured that increase in tax. So, um, and unfortunately, the form instructions don't show you how to calculate the qualifying therapeutic discovery project grant. Uh, so, let's just say that that's a thousand dollars. We would simply add all of this, so that looks like it's about thirty-three fifty. That is the total tax increase um, that you would then add to your respective line on your tax return. So for partnerships, this would go on form 1065 Schedule K, line 20C with code H. For S corporations, you would enter this on form 1120S Schedule K, line 17D using code G. For estates and trusts, you would enter this amount on Form 1041, Schedule G, Line 5. And that's all we have for this uh, video. If you'd like to go step-by-step step and learn a little bit more about calculating this credit, we've written an article. Simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com, uh, type in IRS Form 4255 in the search bar, and our article should appear. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a good day.